doody all my beauties welcome back to another epi of league unlock a little han solo on the episode today and my name is eric because we've got more lck action week one bonanzas hanwa life making their season debut and it's a quick turnaround for t1 after their debut loss against genji they are back on the rift against a at least one familiar face and we know historically especially last year the kwangdong freaks against t1 always seem to somehow end up being an absolute banger of a matchup so hoping that those thieves continue in 2024 and so far at the very least well t1 was definitely having some fun usually it's game two that's the four fun uh type of matchup for t1 but this time it was that first game where they were having a hoot we'll call it the classic yone in the top lane for mr zeus who we know has dominated on the international stage bot lane goes beautifully yone avoids a gank here and then after owner had gotten faker incredibly ahead on the oriana against yes that is a way in the mid lane for bulldog as uh zeus comes in to steal that kill and that eventually got him rolling faker was sacrificing everything for this dude he tps in to save him and then he's the one who's gonna eventually get blown up here but trying to dive and kill zeus on that top outer turret weibo had to learn it at worlds guangdong freaks are learning it day one of the lck that's why it's a triple ends up being three kills over to him uh faker your sacrifice will not be in vain as obviously that yone got so unbelievably ahead and then even in a fight that looks like it should be perfect for kdf it just doesn't matter because you're down 12k gold so even in essentially a 4v5 faker's low health yone's not even there it's still guma on the lucian finally able to open up kick down the door grab a couple of kills his way 17 to 3 now in kills this one eventually ballooned as thick just letting cuz letting the minions do the dirty work to his former jungler letting him know that this is still faker's world in the lck but that first game ballooned to what was eventually an 18k gold lead carry is flying around the rift on the rift herald not even trying to hit turrets going into the wall it was a classic game two fiesta uh, for t1 except it happened in the first game and somehow this is where the big change for the boys are happening this year because game two was business as usual it was it was all not all smooth sailing but smooth enough uh, it was guma who had an unfortunate 80 carry type of game where he just couldn't get involved early on faker tp's in on his 17 game win streaking quirky to grab a double kill and guma started this game two five and one he was not having any fun and then all of a sudden a few team fights he gets forgotten about Delusion Nami truly gets to come online. He gets a triple kill and he's thirsting for more. Looking for that second pentakill already of the spring split in the LCK. But he'd have to just make do with a triple. And then it's another fight. This game, you can see the gold lead much closer. It was already like 13, 15k in game one. Basically dead even until this other team fight. The flank is not there for the Guangdong Freaks. Nami play fantastic out of Kyria as always as Bulldog would try to uh, steal that Baron and it would not go his way and then the Orn eventually became so tanky Zeus got another solo kill in this game by the way feel like Orn is pretty damn busted in this current patch felt terrible for Bulldog he was often just left watching as his team died below or behind him or somewhere else on the map but uh, a tune of sub 60 minutes under an hour it took for t1 to uh dismantle the freaks but as i mentioned that second game was actually pretty competitive and still this was the debut for the Kwangdong freaks as well so only a 0-1 start for them and still feel like they have the potential to maybe be a playoff team taeyun i mean guma was behind in both of these games on that lucian nami where by the way He's still getting that support item so absolutely not a misclick in that first series for t1 this is the legit strategy going forward uh, at least for that lucian nami as guma is basically the only dude in the world actually picking up wins on this lucian pick so t1 
2-0 for T1. They bounce back business as usual, which isn't business as usual because for once, T1 did not need three games to take down a lower tier squad. Before the defending world champs got on the rift, Hanwha Life was making their season year debut against DRX with this newly revamped lineup. Peanut, Doran, Delight, all the Gen G boys coming over. And oh, look, it's more Lucian Nami in game one of this one. This time it's Viper uh, piloting it with Delight alongside him. Bione goes mid for Zeka because this ain't no 2-1 business. But 28 minutes into the game and Hanwha Life is still without a single kill. Even when they were finding some solid engages, they were just unable to find themselves a kill. And then finally, they're still in this game somehow without even picking up a single kill. It was soul point uh, for DRX, but they finally get an engage. A couple kills go over. Doran does go down on Cassante, but it doesn't matter. Teddy has to dash in. He gets cleaned up by Viper. Those three kills pretty much all Hanwha Life needed to then go pocket themselves a Baron and slowly close the game out from there. The slow-paced gameplay of Hanwha carries over from what we saw throughout the majority of 2023 when they weren't looking so good at times, but they're actually able to close out relatively quickly after that one. The DRX question marks are... Still there for sure, but they were in control for 26 minutes of that first game. So still plenty of things that you could be excited about, unfortunately, for the DRX boys. Game two, there was less to be excited about. There was plenty to be excited about for Hanwha, especially Peanut rocking the Zach pick in this one. Something we've seen from him throughout the years as we had this insane little 3v3 action. Viper with the Renata Glass going to be a little bit thirsty as he gets the bailout. He does fall down eventually, but there's plenty more to be cleaned up by Hanwha. Zeka in on the Azir. Not a champion we usually... You know, he's got that trifecta Silas, Akali, even Yoni you can throw in there. But he had a real good Azir performance. But this was all about Peanut on Zach. You saw him interrupt the Tristana there. Mid-jump, he did that a couple of times in this game. Teddy couldn't even play the game because Peanut was launching himself from three screens away for the majority of it. 23 minutes were already breaking down in hibs. Double in hibs at that for Hanwha Life. A totally different level of performance from what we got out of them in that first game they were fully in control start to finish as i mentioned the zach was just absolutely deadly across the map so a 2-0 start to the year for hanwha life and obviously this is a team that's got a whole lot of expectations with three-fifths of that near three-peating genji lineup lineup coming over to Zeka and Viper who we talked about for so many weeks and splits on Hanwha being stuck in ELO hell well it doesn't look to be the case heading into this year I know it's only one series and it's against DRX who now two series deep we're looking at maybe they just are a bottom tier team I mean I think we had we had them in that bottom three area but uh, even Teddy has been a little bit underwhelming. Rascal has been the only, you know, real bright spot. I still expect some of these younger rookies to develop over the year, but a rough two game set, uh, two series set to kick off the season for DRX. Hanwha Life, all the, basically the three days of LCK so far, it's just been favorites winning, except for that Gen GT1 series where, I mean, the Less of a huge favorite going on there. But KT Rolster, D-plus, Hanwha Life, all getting pretty convincing 2-0s, which means we're just waiting for some of these legit top-of-the-table playoff contenders to match up on the Rift, and we will get some of that over the weekend. LEC is back. LCS making the debut. LPL kicks off on Monday. So next time we're on a show talking about games, we will finally have all four major regions playing at the same time since... November? I mean, not even November. You're going back to October when there was still all four major regions taking part at the World Championship. So a couple months, the wait is over. The winter might just be beginning, but the winter of absent games is long since gone. And that is it today for League Unlock. My name is Eric. You guys stay beautiful as always. Thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.